Hello, Rich Evans. Hello, Jay. Are you ready to shoot another best of the worst? I am ready, Jay. What's, right. what's the deal today? Oh, we have a whole new gimmick for this episode, Rich. I know how much you love the gimmicks. Oh, no. What's the gimmick this time, Jay? The gimmick is absolutely no gimmicks. Well, Rich, on beautiful VHS, we have Hologram Man. And we're going to spin a giant roulette wheel to determine whether or not we watch that? We're just going to watch it. Just watch it. Here, read the box. Oh. Slash Gallagher, Evan, <laughs> Evan Laurie, double Wait. impact. Well, he is a mad psycho terrorist. And what is his name? Uh, Slash Gallagher. <laughs> so he, he smashes watermelons <laughs> with a machete. <laughs> okay. Is brought to justice by rookie cop Kurt Dakota, Joe Laura from Steel Frontier. The, they, they could just be making these up, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Convicted. Slash's prison term is to be served in the meanest form of detainment. Holographic stasis. <laughs> his mind and soul are stored on a computer, while his twisted brain is to be reprogrammed. Slash's gang of killers, intent on freeing their leader, break his mind and soul. Separately. Like, separately. They, yeah. they, 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 these two different things? This is, this is going to be like, yeah, two different movies gonna, happening, happening simultaneously. You got a mind, a soul, and a brain, and this movie treats all of these things as being different? Yes. Out of the computer's clutches, but his body is destroyed. Now he stalks the streets as an electromagnetic hologram, <laughs> able to walk through walls and with no fear of bullets, slashes the power of a god. Oh my god. The only man who can bring him down is the cop who put him away, how Dakota. Does, how does being a hologram give him god powers? I don't know. How can you even touch anything? <laughs> like, you can get in the bank, but then you can't grab just, the yeah, money. Yeah, your hand just goes through the... <laughs> it's like, oh shit. Oh, fuck. I did not think this through. <laughs> I like there's a skull. <laughs> Perfect. So now they're going to reprogram his soul to put back into his body. They're it. No, they're going to take it out of soul so they can reprogram his brain before they put his soul back in the reprogrammed brain. <laughs> this is very complicated. Oh! Hostages? Hostages are of no concern. Get down there. Get Gallagher and kill him. But he's a hologram! He's a hologram! Man. You know this! How am I going to kill him, sir? <laughs> <laughs> have, have you come up with a way to kill him? No! Right. How can he. <sighs> Whatever. <laughs> Okay, so I have in my hands here Faust, mm. Love of the Damned. Yes, well, Faust, this is a movie we ordered because we saw the trailer before some other movie on Best of the Worst. It happens a lot. Yeah. Um, Jeffrey Combs is in this. Andrew Devoff, who's the Wishmaster, is in this. And Mark Frost, who co-created Twin Peaks, is in this. Jay, did you fart? Something reminded me of a David Lynch film, and I just got so excited I farted. <laughs> what happens when an ordinary man is so deeply hurt that, to take revenge, he is capable of doing absolutely anything, even sell his soul to the devil? <laughs> so this is Spawn. <laughs> yeah. He looks like Spawn. Yeah? Um, when John Jasper's girlfriend is brutally murdered, he vows to avenge her death any way he can. When the mysterious M appears and offers a solution, John hastily agrees and signs the deal. Mephistopheles. That's what the M stands for? Yeah. What? I thought it stood for McFarlane. <laughs>
Suddenly, John has powers he can't even control, much less understand. The violent urges, the razor-sharp claws, the constant pain, and the pulsating scar on the palm of his hand. His constant reminder that everything has its price. <laughs> Welcome to the nightmare of the 21st century. That's just the slogan like, for the real world now. Okay. Is it, is it worth your soul? <laughs> Faust! Uh-oh. <laughs> oh my god, it's the mask. Oh boy. Oh. Oh no. Yes! Jay, you're missing everything! Oh god, it's it's terrible. Yeah, it's terrible! Is he full of Faust on costume? Oh no! <laughs> It looked like the mask, like for a second, Jim Carrey. Yep. Somebody stop me! Oh my god! Well, Rich, our last film, the much anticipated sequel to Low Blow, <laughs> Blood Street. It looks like Low Blow's hair is about to fly off when he's doing this kick here. Well, because it is. <laughs> this is more action than he than he did at all in Low Blow. <laughs> So why don't you tell us about Blood Street? Uh, before I tell you anything, I'm, I have I have one major major worry. This is a nice car. Oh Low yeah. Blow, Low Blow shouldn't drive a nice car. No, he needs his piece of shit. <laughs> he needs his piece of shit. Blood Street's fast-paced action sets the mean streets of San Francisco ablaze. Joe Wong, Leo Fong. <laughs> They get him trying. <laughs> like they're worried he wouldn't respond to an. He, well, he made the movie, and he's worried he won't respond to a name that's not his own. Yes, have a name that sounds similar <laughs> to his real name, so he remembers to react to it. Yeah. <laughs> he's a streetwise private investigator hired by the seductive Vanna McDonald, Playboy <laughs> centerfold Kim Page, to trace the mysterious disappearance of her husband. What seems to be a routine case quickly turns the streets bloody red with violence as Joe unwittingly steps into a lethal crossfire between the two biggest drug lords in history. Joe soon realizes that it was Vanna herself who orchestrated the entire bloodbath. Spoiler! And it's up to him alone to find the courage to bring justice back to the streets of San Francisco. Action sequences directed by world karate champion George Chung. I just want to know who directed the, the scenes with Rod Stewart. <laughs> Throw him off the fucking building! Ah! 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 Oh! Ah! 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 He shot his yes, foot off! He shot his foot off! <laughs> Still don't know what you're talking about. Then let me refresh your memory. I think that's a knife. <laughs> oh! Oh, the scene's over. Oh, oh, wait. oh wait, now we're back! Oh god! Wait. Was that an accident? <laughs> a little piece of film got caught in between the scenes. <laughs> not, not stylistic editing. Fuck it, I'm not taking any chances. So on today's <laughs> episode of Best of the Worst... Don't you want to describe we, Faust? Uh, no. No, I don't want to do it. Oh. Jay, it, it totally has to be Jay. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to describe the other two. I don't want anything to do with that. So I'm taking charge, I'm stepping in. Okay. And, and fuck it, Mike, tell us about Hologram Man, <laughs> the first movie we watched on today's episode. Well, Rich, this is a Richard Pepin film. <laughs> Uh, and, and that the, that's the lead actor from, uh, 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 oh fuck, I ruined it. That's the lead actor from Battlefield Earth. Isn't his name like Barry Pepper or something? Oh He's yeah. He's like that actor that oh, was Barry in Pepper. two movies and then vanished. That is nowhere near close to, to, to Richard Pepin to, in order to be <laughs> remotely funny, but it was a real good try. Isn't uh, that the guy, he, he played for the, uh, the, the Charlotte Hornets, right? Oh, if this is a sports reference, you're, you've That's come Scottie to the wrong Pippen. 
Scotty oh. Pippen, why would you pick the Charlotte Hornets and not the Bulls? <laughs> I was going to say, you, you said the Bulls. Bulls. Are you a fucking idiot? Are you, <laughs> <laughs> He's most known for playing for the Bulls. Even I know that. That's all my, all my sports knowledge. I knew oh, Scotty God. Pippen was a thing. Fucking Michael Jordan's right-hand man. <laughs> During the, the years where nothing. the Bulls won six championships in five years. I, I knew the name of the sports guy. That's all I know. <laughs> All I can remember is like NBA Jam on the Super Nintendo, and I thought I remembered Scottie Pippen and uh, Patrick Ewing on the Rich, Hornets. I'm, I'm real right? happy to say uh -huh. we're sitting on the non embarrassing side of the table. <laughs> <laughs> and you're sitting next to Rich Evans. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the night's off the rails already. Uh. I haven't even started talking about Hologram Man. <laughs> and 50% of the panel have, have already embarrassed themselves. <laughs> okay. And not Rich Evans. <laughs> and Jack is wearing a Star Trek t-shirt. It's true. Hologram Man. <laughs> hologram Man. Uh, hologram Man sucks. <laughs> it stars Joe Lara, uh, no, a nobody. Um, Are you reading the back of the box because you don't remember what happened? No, the I do. <laughs> okay. Um, this you you got to do the, uh, uh, the, 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 blend, the, the blender. Yeah, yeah the blender the, pitch. This is, this is uh, uh, Demolition Man meets Lawnmower Man, meets, I would say a little bit of Hollow Man, but that's a later film. So um, not. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna scratch that off, meets RoboCop, meets, there was one more. Speed. Well, there was a bus, no, uh, bus gets taken over. It wasn't, Speed wasn't the one though. No, Dark Man. Dark, Dark Man. Man, yeah. So a bunch of, a bunch of films put together, uh, the premise is convicted criminal, uh, his name is Slash Gallagher. I kept wanting to call him Slade Craven, but that was from another movie we watched. Yes, that's Turbulence 3. Turbulence 3, High Voltage? What is that movie called? Um, Turbulence 3. <laughs> is it High Voltage? No, no that's it's Crank 2 High crank Voltage. Crank 2 High Voltage. Turbulence 3, High Velocity? Turbulence? Turbulence 3, <laughs> Turbulence. Yeah, I said that already. I think that's what the title actually was. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The main character's name is, is Slash Gallagher. Yes. Which we had said. He smashes watermelons with a guitar yeah. while wearing a top hat. <laughs> uh, and he does have the hair. He, he resembles Jonathan Davis, the lead singer of Korn. Slash Gallagher is a, is a criminal slash revolutionary mm -hmm. uh, who wants to take down the government and he is imprisoned and the, the new form of, of taking care of inmates is to, to take out their soul with a machine <laughs> And put into the Austin Powers mojo tube. Yes, yes. <laughs> I have his mojo. <laughs> they operate on the brain to, to rewire the brain so it's no longer criminal. And then they put the soul back in and they rehabilitate the prisoner. As we see in, a, in an example scene. I know in my heart what I did was wrong. I feel remorse. Now I just want to serve society. It worked on that guy, but then when Slade Craven comes in front of the jury or whatever, the parole board. Whoa! What the hell? Holograms becoming real! <laughs> A real hologram. <laughs> Have you anything to say for yourself? Captain, I see it's chairman now. It's quite amazing to see that such an intellectual sphincter like yourself could actually achieve such a prestigious position. He calls a guy an intellectual sphincter. Yes. <laughs> which I think is a great insult. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna use it someday. Probably on you. <laughs> but, um, so Slade Craven cannot be rehabilitated and eventually his friend, uh, Larry Daryl and Daryl, his other brother Daryl, <laughs> He's a computer genius, steals his soul from the computer via a uh, hack, and then he gives him life as an autonomous hologram. Don't worry, Dakota. You'll get another chance. I'm back. <laughs> Putting out an APB for a hologram? <laughs> yes. Arm yourselves with pails of water. There's a main cop who looks just like him. That's the problem. Like a white they're, guy with long hair. Yeah, they're both. They're both. Yeah, they're both kind of buff guys with long hair. You make, you make one blonde. Yeah. You, you give one of them. Hairs. You give one of them short hair. You give you give one of them like a big beard. Uh, 
I mean, spoilers for the end of the movie, they both become hologram men, and they're fighting, and they just look like the same person. <laughs> Like, why do their holograms have ponytails? <laughs> well, when you're a hologram man, though, you get all these neat powers. Like, you can you can walk through walls, and you're you're you just you can electrocute people and shoot out fireballs. But you're also intangible, so you're also, no you're one completely can intangible. You. So the bullets go right through you. But then they just put on these rubber suits that nullify all of these advantages <laughs> they get. Well, no, they and put, they look like normal humans. They put on these rubber suits, which you know are you are also invulnerable, and we could only assume you live forever because you're just pure energy. Mm -hmm. Yet, Slade Craven really wants his body back. Because if I know Slash tonight, he'll want his body back. Not very nice what you did to my body back there. We can all agree the script is just fucking terrible. Oh, yes. yeah. It is just, it's just a mishmash of all these ideas and nothing makes sense. Obviously, it's a bad script. They just made it up. Right around the time when they were going for the body, I was thinking in my brain, oh, yeah. His body is somewhere, right? <laughs> Why isn't the cop using that as a bargaining chip? Yeah. Hey Slade, I got your body here. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna blow its brains out unless you stop your nonsense. And then the script thought of the body too at the same time. It's like the screenwriter was writing it. He was 75% of the way oh, through. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, the body. Oh, the cop just goes there and shoots the body. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then it's never mentioned again. It's yeah. like that, like number one, first thing. Yeah. He's running around, he's a crazy out of control hologram. Where's his fucking body? Well, that's the biggest problem with this movie is the script, because nothing makes any sense, and it all feels like it's being made up as it goes along, which is disappointing because there's some legitimate production value. Like, there's so... Oh, yeah. There are so many, like, explosions and squibs. Well, there's like the, the opening action scene goes on for like 20 minutes, and that's before we even realize the movie was supposed to take place in the future. It's also it's also disappointing with the rest of the movie because that opening action stuff is like like incredibly vulgar and violent. Like there's tons of swearing. Like Slade Craven is just saying like fuck every other word. I said lose the fucking gun now. How tough you really fucking are, huh? I told you not to fucking move. No shit. And oh yeah, and our lead action hero, his catchphrase, which is shit. <laughs> Shit! 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 Which he says when his partner dies. <laughs> Shit! Shit! <laughs> That's, a... That's his clever catchphrase. <laughs> For all the guns and shooting and cops that this movie has, Nobody has even the most basic knowledge <laughs> of how to operate in like a crisis situation. Like e even I would know, okay, I should probably duck and cover behind this thing. Don't get, don't uh, pull your cop car up and run around to the front of your cop car. But just run at people without any cover whatsoever. Yeah. They were in, they were in tactical get mode down formation. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, they were. They were like. This is this is how an evil corporation was able to take over the government in the future. Okay. okay. The cops are just so the cops incompetent. are just so incompetent that the the corporation that is not OCP just comes right in, oh. and takes control. My favorite part of his transition into adulthood was the little bit of white that they put into his hair. Mm. And the beard that he has in some scenes, but not <laughs> others. <laughs> Inconsistent beard stubble is a medical condition that affects 30% of adult males, too. Oh. That's true. That's true. Of bald males? Of all males. Oh, of all males. They said bald, because I say he's not bald. In Los Angeles. That's a, a side effect of smog. The dragon from the Hobbit movies? Mm -hmm. No, that's Smaug. 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 Remember the Hobbit movies? Do you remember the Denny's Hobbit meals? They have that for, for the new Han Solo film. Uh, they Hobbit Denny's meals? meals they for... do, they're doing a Denny's cross promotion. Oh my god. I was hoping it was Han Solo Hobbit meals. Han Solo's Hobbit hole? Yeah. <laughs> There's been a, a picture going around of a villain, and it's like a lobster, a guy with a lobster and lobster claws, and it's oh. called like, like, like crazy McScissor punch. <laughs> It's like a real thing. 
Crazy McScissor Punch. I'm gonna fight. <laughs> <laughs> crazy McScissor Punch. Okay, okay. I. Scissor punch? scissor punch? That has to be fake. It's a lobster. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's, it's not even like, like um, what's, what's his face? Uh, uh, Admiral Akbar. Akbar, yeah. The um, calamari. He was a Mon calamari. Mon calamari. Um, right. but, but this it, is literally a lobster. If that's a Lord Miller gag, that makes sense. Because yeah. they probably just came up with a bunch of dumb Scissor names. punch. And yeah. like, I mean, I love it. I actually love it. I'm, I'm all, I'm if all it's for a Star gag. Wars yeah. schlock. Um, oh. And notice we're talking about anything but yeah. hologram man. A therm scissor punch. <laughs> oh, I feel alive again! This machine simply makes polymer molds. It's a type high prehensile rubber. The polymer suit can be shaped into any kind of human you want. That, that they, they make a point of mentioning, okay, like Dark Man, you can look like anyone now. They have, I don't know how they figure that though, because they have this giant, it's like a big, Awkward contraption. It's, it's like a Play-Doh press. Yeah, it's a, it's like a giant mold that that hologram man has to get into, and then it goes around him, and, and they close it, mm -hmm. and then it pours the liquid latex around him. And but they say like you can look like anyone now. And it's like oh, what are they gonna do with this? Oh, nothing. They're they're ignoring <laughs> all the. Yeah, they, he doesn't do anything with it. But the, I mean, okay, we'll, we'll look aside for the whole idea that a machine can suck your soul out and put it in a tube <laughs> right? while technicians rewire your brain so that they could put your soul back in and you live in a hologram world. Yeah. I'm okay with that. But when it came to the, the machine that made the rubber body, like- that, That's where you had issues. That's where I started to have issues. <laughs> <laughs> well, it gets worse. Yeah, it gets worse. The machine with the, like the 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 the, um, the new heart guy explains it. He's got this very big contraption, and the, and and then he comes out of it, and he has hair. Yeah, uh -huh. he, uh, he has teeth. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Beard stubble. Uh huh. None of that's explained. They they did have a very nice like seam. Yeah, that oh, was cool. That was fun. That was a detail. Right. But then it really goes off the rails. <laughs> When they, this is this is what I, the point I brought up before about the screenwriters just writing shit. Now, oh, uh, uh, the hero cop is a is a ghost now. He turns into a hologram at the end of the movie. Yeah. yeah. What's all that stuff? This is your skin. Oh, he's gonna look perfectly human. Yes. Yeah, he won't, he won't look like the the. That's not even super enough to cover his torso. <laughs> Oh. Are you oh, fucking what? kidding me? What? She's pretty good with the airbrush. <laughs> she even got the stubble. Oh god. I never wanted to do this. <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> At least with with the bad guy, they have this whole contraption, like this this mold. Right. But she's just like what pouring latex on this hologram? She recreates what they did with this like more, much more sophisticated technology. How did she do the hair? Yeah. Right. She had no, a wig I, that looked exactly like She's it. painting on his skin, but it has a close up of his perfectly sculpted beard stubble. <laughs> it's like, how did you paint individual hairs, lady? A better question is why does she spend the time to do any of this? Is there any purpose to this other than to, so they didn't have to have a hologram effect for the whole movie? Yes. That's it. That's well, it. She could she touch him, I guess. Is that oh, a that, Well, she does touch him. They fuck, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> I thought the rubber kept that from happening. <laughs> well, it only happened a little bit. This is the cheap rubber. <laughs> they are gonna have sex. How is he gonna have sex? <laughs> How is he gonna have a... Did you just, did you paint his dick too? <laughs> she, oh God. She did, she painted his dick. There's there's numerous ways to improve the script. Yeah, it's like like watching like like a two year old like draw something. <laughs> Mike, you know? like oh, you're trying to draw the sun. <laughs> it's a fucking circle. You know? And, 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 like you know what I mean? It's like that. It's like yeah. where you're just like anything. Anything will help. <laughs> Good eye. Ghost cop or hologram cop uses his special superpower to look like the president of space. That's right. And then 
cover himself with another layer of latex that <laughs> his, his girlfriend meticulously painted all the details on <laughs> so that he, when he ripped off the president of space, he was hero cop underneath. Mm -hmm. I don't know how she did it, but she did it. Because if what you would mean? spray latex on latex, it would just stick it to the original It would just stick to each other. Latex, right? <laughs> she put a layer of baby powder. There you go. Oh, That's what you got to do. Yeah. There you go. That we couldn't really see it in the VHS yeah. version. It was a very How was she able to paint the contours so they look like the President of Space's face contours? And what'd she do with all of his hair? <laughs> it's just like smushed into a ball. Like the President of Space has just this giant humpback. <laughs> What's that giant humpback, sir? Oh, it's a tumor, a space tumor. Why do you look all fucked up? <laughs> it should have been like like Schwarzenegger and the, the woman in drag and oh, yeah. Total Recall. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you, sir? Man, that's a good movie. <laughs> wow, that is a good movie. I was thinking the exact fucking same thing. Mm -hmm. Just, man, that's a good movie. That that is a, a Total Recall. Quality flick. That's the shit. This side of the table thinks alike. <laughs> Is that the expression? I don't like this. Stay on your side of the table. <laughs> we're gonna put a we're line gonna, here. Like we're gonna build a wall. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're gonna build a wall and Jay is gonna pay for it. That's right. <laughs> Crikey, I've lost my mojo. All right, well, hol Hologram Man is, is done. Keep it we're, going, we're keep done. it going. It's like, well, here, here, talk about Faust. <laughs> Faust? Faust? Faust. 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 Hey. Smaug. Smaug. The desolation, the of, desolation Faust. of Faust. The desolation of Faust. <laughs> uh, uh, man, you know, I'm not gonna lie, this movie melted my brain so much, I can't remember the details of the plot. It's essentially Spawn, just way more fucked up and kinky and the last act goes off the rails. It's, it's Spawn meets The Crow meets... Uh, from Beyond. From Beyond. Yeah, well that's the thing. This is directed by Brian Usna, who produced Reanimator and From Beyond, and he directed uh, movies like Bride of Reanimator and Society, which I'm not gonna say anything more about. Uh, I always say, watch that movie without knowing anything about it. But it's this guy. He sells his soul to the devil and becomes a, a, a superhero. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Quotation marks. Physically, he looks like Bible Man, and that was the most shocking part of the movie. Yes. In a movie full of shocking things. An anti-Bible Man. He becomes the anti-Bible Man. No one can steal the redeem from Jesus' care. That means there are no lost causes in God's eyes. <laughs> It feels like a movie that was like shot as one thing and then re-edited as something else because there's lots of quick cuts, there's lots of like metal music. Right off the, the get-go, this movie starts off kind of like slow and arty. Yeah. And, and downbeat and you know, the there's a guy, music. he's crying over the death of somebody. We have no idea what's going on. It feels like a scene that was taken from later in the movie that they just moved at the beginning. These credits do not match the preceding scene. No! no. <laughs> Wake up, dickheads! It's time for foul! <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Whoa! And it kicks you in the fucking face! <laughs> Faust is here! It goes Curse of the Wolf on you. No, it goes full Curse, curse of the Faust! Curse of the Faust! That's when I knew this was going to be something good. Yeah, right. I, I assume most of this is based on the success of Spawn? Or the, or the Todd Mc... I know the movie wasn't uh, very popular. Say not the movie. No, the, the character was... The, the yeah. Todd McFarlane era.
And then we wondered because there were moments where it felt like there, like there should have been horrifying gore or that it was edited. Yeah, and it, it, felt, it a, felt like an edited down. Yeah, like but this to, is to make, it, to make it not some kind of weird, gory horror movie, yes. right. but to turn it into a superhero yes, film. Yes, exactly. What the hell? What the hell? What's the matter? Don't like my art? So it wasn't edited for content necessarily to, you know, to not make it be an R, it was edited to make it more like a spawn. To, to change the tone. To change the tone. Which to feels it... like a very futile effort, given all the weird fucking all shit the, that's yeah, still in the movie. The giant satanic <laughs> ending. Yeah. The puddle of boobs. <laughs> like, I, I think your theory gets kicked right out the door as soon as the horny lady gets turned into a literal puddle of tits and ass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> hmm? I can't let you expire just yet, now can I? You have a very special role to play. Did he just make her a tit puddle? <laughs> I think that was one thing that they filmed and they're like, we ain't getting rid of that. <laughs> we spent so much time on that. Go, it's bizarre. Go, go watch the screen and just watch my expression during that. <laughs> I swear to God, it's gonna be gold. Whatever your expression is, <laughs> if you pan over to me, I'm probably like, <laughs> it's probably like the polar opposite. <laughs> I, I watched most of this movie in just utter horror. Yeah. <laughs> I, looked over, I looked over at Rich and he's like, <laughs> and I, I looked over at Shay and he's like, <laughs> It's a relatively kind of well-made and sort of like conventional B-movie with just enough miscalculations to make certain parts of it very, very funny. Uh, especially the lead performance. He's like me underwear's guy from the room. Too much blood or not enough. He, he looks like Fire Marshal Bill every yeah. now and then. <laughs> <laughs> like, and it's like, oh, no, no, no. But yeah, I think it was a, like a hindsight thing where they look back and they go, oh. Do you, do you remember when, when the, the lady doctor says, I wanted to fuck you from the first time I saw you? I wanted you the first moment I saw you. Do you remember? Do you remember what he looked like the first time she saw him? The first time she saw him, he was, she was his doctor, and he was in a padded cell, and he looked like a lunatic. And more importantly, he was writing on the wall with his own blood, cross-eyed. Going... <laughs> the first time I saw him, I wanted to fuck him. Oh, that says a lot more about you than it does about him, lady. Yeah. Well, it's also weird because when he first sells his soul to the devil and the devil's, well, not the devil, but the devil's uh, whatever, minion, yeah. mm -hmm. is played by Wishmaster. M? M. Oh, Mephistoles? Yeah. What? What's his name? Mephistoles? That's not right. That's not right. Try again. Mephistopheles? Oh! Hey, oh, oh! Take <laughs> that, Mike! <laughs> Oh, are you gonna are you gonna put it in a caption? Me saying it right? <laughs> <laughs> With a little gold star next to it. Yeah. Mephistopheles. <laughs> you did it, Rich. You did no, it. No, no. Then you gotta cut to like a, a, a scoreboard, like a chalkboard, and it's gonna have like the line down the middle, Rich and Mike. And then <laughs> for your side, it's gonna have all these little marks on it, <laughs> like. And then, and then I'm just gonna get like one. Yeah. Ding, ding. I'm real, I'm real proud of you. I thought you were gonna struggle with that for like like a couple hours. We'd be here till four I mean, in the morning. I, I mean, you know, it's not the easiest word to say. I could tell him. Jasper's has become a threat to an important ceremony, which a group. What a weird collection of villains. Lots of weird-looking people. 
Also well, then, the then, mid, then you're, there's you're, a midget and there's, an elderly there's, lady. There was a, a little person, there was an elderly lady, there was a, a goofy looking Asian dude. It, it reminded me of the like the the uh, Dr. Evil like round table of all the super Oh, villains. yeah. Because that old, super old lady looked like super old Frau Forbisna. <laughs> and I was like, this is, this, is, this is bordering on Goofy. Yeah. And that's why I like it. Bordering? <laughs> the whole, whole movie. It's crossed the line. You got a midget sitting next to Frau yeah. Forbisna. <laughs> And then they pan around. There's like there's a black lady with like a glowing crystal, yeah. and, and there's a and the and the wishmaster has bleach blonde slick back hair. Yeah, there's there's no bordering goofy. This this movie was jumping back and forth while naked, covered in grease. <laughs> So it's it's like David Cronenberg meets Black Cougar. <laughs> yes. The elite supervillains at the yeah. end. That's what Rich is getting at. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's kind of right. That's kind of perfect. And then yeah, it is perfect. Weirdo yeah. body pervert stuff with kind of bad and silly action. Yeah. Yeah. No, you know, I, I see a, a lot of parallels with this and From Beyond. Yeah. You have Jeffrey Combs uh, making an evil turn. Mm -hmm. You have uh, creatures from beyond invading. You, you have your your doctor lady who gets seduced by the dark side. Uh, it's there. There. There's a lot of parallels, which I think is neat. <laughs> what did you think was gonna happen when he played metal music? He, he had s suppressed rage mm -hmm. because that, that's what the guy put on when they were murdering his girlfriend. Yeah. And she had also suppressed uh, emotions about her being raped by her father when this, she was 11. This is a and this is where it gets story. This is yeah. where it gets weird and fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'd, I'd like to Torch about doesn't want to talk about it. Tor 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 Torch. We'll get Someone take it. it. <laughs> no, no, we'll I get ain't touching it. <laughs> I'll deal, we'll deal with Jay that. Jay Bowman, talk about it. Let me taste you, Doctor. This has got weird. <laughs> so I'm just gonna say it. Remember, remember. This is this is. Yeah. Well, this yeah, this is odd because she's fantasizing about the monster that raped her. Right. Jello head. We discover about halfway through the movie that the female uh, is she the psychologist of. The Faust character. Uh, yeah, therapist. Therapist, yeah. whatever she is. Um, we discover in a flashback that she was like molested by your dad. She was raped by your dad. Mm -hmm. And she's tried to suppress this memory. The tables turn in the second half of the movie where now the uh, 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 Wishmaster's assistant woman is wearing like just like latex BDSM stuff. Mm -hmm. Her whole thing is she's like the embodiment of like temptation and lust. She is just always horny, always yeah. looking too fucked. She's a self-proclaimed whore. Right. <sighs> and so yeah, she is not just torturing, she is sex torturing. Yeah. As a like a psychological tool. It it's so fucking weird. It, it triggers her emotions. Yeah. I mean, she's she's It makes her confront this past right. and her father raping her. Yeah. She's in like, like a fucking Iron Maiden thing, mm -hmm. and, and uh, I don't know where they got all this stuff. And she's like, <laughs> she's like, <laughs> it was in the, it's in the director's garage. garage. It's just the director's. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then and then it, it, but but that pays off at the end. Psychology doctor lady gets put on the th the altar, and Wishmaster <laughs> says, "I'm going to impregnate you." But he and here here was the the big eyebrow razor, <laughs> where what say what saves this is checking out what saves the day at the end of Faust. Child, you are mine. Not quite. You should have done your homework. I can't have children. When I was raped, I was just eleven. 
But the damage wasn't only mental. I have no wound. I thrive on the impossible. Rape saved the day? <laughs> her dad's <laughs> was so big it destroyed her. Just another of his tricks. Uh, well, and she cleverly used that to her advantage to so. save the day. <laughs> uh, she could have just said, I'm on birth control. <laughs> <laughs> It has completely given up the pretext that this is a superhero film. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. You mean when the demon orgy starts? <laughs> yeah. Don't leave me. From the moment I tasted revenge, my fate was sealed. And then Faust it cuts to him at the original moment on the bridge. Oh yeah, that was when, confusing. When he made the deal with the devil, and then he jumps off the bridge and, it di and he dies. And then it cuts to him dead. Like, almost like a time travel thing? Like I think, nothing I think that was just some kind of metaphor thing. I think he actually died from the bullets he got shot with earlier that didn't kill him when he had Faust powers. Yeah, I, okay, okay. It's very artistic in this movie that also has a scene where a snake comes out of a woman's belly button and then gets shoved down Jeffrey Combs' throat. I saw it as more of a modern retelling of It's a Wonderful Life. <laughs> It's a horrible life. <laughs> it's, it's a wonderful death. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 Clarence. Every, every time a bell rings, Satan gets a boner. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, the, the, not, next we watched Blood Street. Last we watched. And Blood Street is a very special movie <laughs> in that I think Jack is the only human being on this planet who could even come close to telling you what the fuck happened. <laughs> All of my superpowers. Jack doesn't even know. <laughs> very <laughs> special movie. I just hate that I, I have to follow up Faust with Faust. Blood Street. Faust. I'm sorry, you're the only man for the job. And you know what? I, you would think that this would be a, a bit of a disappointment after Tit Puddle. <laughs> <laughs> but Leo Fong pulls it out again. Yes, he does. And again and that's again. That's what she said. <laughs> that's what the, all the actresses in the film said. None of their uteruses work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay, this, well, okay, for anyone that doesn't know, we watched a movie called Low Blow, and this is the sequel to Low Blow, so we're gonna call his character Low Blow. Are you gonna start talking about God, Blood Street no, yet? I've been putting it off. Okay, no, it's <laughs> like the story is so simple. It's it's uh it's it's detective noir fan fiction starring Joe Fong. Uh, in which he, Joe, Leo, Leo Fong, Joe Wong Joe is the character. Leo, Leo Fong is a Mary is Sue. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. It's, it's Leo Fong starring as Joe Wong, who is low blow. <laughs> Get it together. <laughs> How could I ever confuse the things? So he's a hard boiled detective. He's a private detective, and a sexy lady comes in, whips out a tit, and says, <laughs> Find my husband. This is a real thing that happens in the movie. <laughs> she then puts her tip back in. Uh, and so I think next he goes into a bar and murders people. <laughs> <laughs> he goes into a bar with the express purpose of ordering a Shirley Temple. Shirley Temple? Man, that's a little boy's drink. Well, you're not old enough to drink, Kane. What? <laughs> he just murdered a guy. Oh, he, <laughs> he just asked why you're drinking a Shirley Temple. <laughs> okay, bye. But, uh, why did you go in there? <laughs> he just straight up um, murdered a guy. <laughs> and so he, then he goes to uh, more places. There's more murder. He murdered. <laughs> There's more murder. <laughs> Everywhere he goes, he leaves a trail of blood behind him. But I mean, him. it's not like he kills everyone. It's pretty casual, just every now and then. Know him? 
I have no recollection. I'm sorry, I can't help you, my man. Be a liar. An ugly liar. Okay, Slan Eyes, and you're next. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Stop <laughs> murdering people! <laughs> Who keeps killing? That guy didn't even do anything. That guy was just a fucking nerd! No, Leo! Stop! He's, he's a madman! He's already dead! <laughs> he has some kind of hidden rage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a formula. It's it's a uh, punch guy, punch guy, and or kick guy, murder guy. Murder someone. Someone Just, that's in the room. But it's very casual and laid back. It's not, he doesn't make a big deal out of it. <laughs> the cops don't make a big deal out of it. Yeah. The owners of the establishments don't seem to care. Just dead bodies piling up. They do uh, want him to replace that dart, though. Yeah, it's got some blood. At least just yeah. clean it off, yeah. you know. So while Loblo is looking for the husband, there is dueling drug lords and their hench people, including Nighthawk. Yes, Nighthawk. Night Nighthawk, Nighthawk Kill from... Kill Point. Kill yes. Point. And don't bleed over my car. Yeah. Which that, is not, which is a Leo Fong movie, but it is not low blow. He's not playing the same <laughs> character. <Kill> <laughs> yeah. He might as well be playing the same character, but he's not. Nighthawk is, is maybe my favorite. He's so cool. Is it Nighthawk or is it Eddie Murphy? Hey, look, man, don't play dumb with us, okay? We got some money, we want to buy some stuff. You want to do a deal? We can do a deal. Yep. I mean, the best Eddie Murphy impersonator around. Don't think Eddie Murphy's in my movie. <laughs> Why does Leo Fong sound like a sleazy <laughs> producer? Find me the best Eddie Murphy impersonator around. And he sounds like Eddie Murphy. He looks like Eddie Murphy. He's wearing full leather outfits. He, he and we, we found out after the movie. Yeah. We looked up. He's a stunt coordinator. Not for this movie, though. Not for, Not this, for this movie. movie. But he's a stunt coordinator. Leo Fong was the stunt coordinator he's, for this movie. He's done a ton of movies. And he has never been Eddie Murphy's stunt double! <laughs> or even fucking stand-in. Right, yeah. Or even his friend. <laughs> he tried once, and Eddie Murphy told him to fuck off. <laughs> okay, so, low blow murders people to find the husband, and as it turns out, the husband is um, getting constant massages. <laughs> <laughs> and slapping black women around. Yeah. And, and Nighthawk is not having He's that. He's not having that. He's, you slap all these other biddies, not that yeah, one. So you slap that girl again. <laughs> and he I'm said, gonna wreck your uterus. <laughs> <laughs> he, says, he says, yeah, I'm gonna wreck your world. And, and then uh, McDonald, that's the husband. <laughs> MacDonald is, yeah. is the husband who's played by a man who's doing an Italian accent, who looks Italian, who sounds like um, Joe Mantegna. Don't have a cow. Mm. Don't have a cow in the toilet. Put a deuce on him. And it's played by a German actor. We know that because the end credits of the movie, they say wh where all the actors are from for some bizarre reason. As... as Hard to follow as the movie is, that is the most baffling part. I hate to jump <laughs> to the end. But nothing has wrecked me more than listing the city and state that the actors live in. It's strange. It's very strange. MacDonald, the husband we're looking for, is actually one of the drug lords. Which we would have known if they had... If I guess if we'd been paying attention. <laughs> uh, they showed us a picture of what the husband looked like. Well, Leo Fong he had, had a picture. picture. We never got to see it though. <laughs> no. There's one scene where he, Leo Fong is in the far distance. It's like a comedy shot, and he's like, like posing on a rock, <laughs> and then he walks up to Big Bad Guy, and he's like, "Have you seen this man?" And we can't. We're like, "What? What are we looking at?" And then the guy's like, "I him. haven't seen that man." And then they, they just punch. Try Sullivan. And then Leo Fong just walks back where he came from, and it's all one shot, and it's just <laughs> beautifully choreographed. They're filming without permits. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. So as we as we go down our 
our detective spiral here. The low blow rabbit hole, as they call it. That's exactly what they call it <laughs> in film school. When you, when you take your semester on low blow. Yeah. <laughs> Plots that make no sense. <laughs> the low blow effect. Low Leo Fawn's dementia. <laughs> Early onset dementia. Who, who teaches that class? The partner's guy? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you why this plot makes total sense. <laughs> this movie's brilliant. While Low Blow is searching for McDonald, who is a drug lord getting massages. Over we... one billion cracks sold. <laughs> uh, I get it. I get it. Like hamburgers. I get it, yeah. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I think Jay's laughing more of how terrible your joke was, <laughs> as opposed to how funny it was. It's fine. No, it works. Now, is that a check mark? It's great. That gets a check mark. <laughs> wow! Oh, hey. that that gets a check mark. So Rich is up to two to like a like hundred trillion. That's almost like it's so bad it comes back around <laughs> to get a check mark. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Uh, we are into, so uh, Massages, Low Blow's looking for her husband. On the other side of the spectrum, we have Rod Stewart, mm -hmm. who is running a uh, underground boxing fight ring in his living room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so isn't that the, that cage fight scene, isn't it also like, there's a cage fight on one side of the room, and the other side of the room is like a fancy party? Right? Well, the fancy party is watching the cage fight. You right. never know because you never see them all in one establishing shot. Sure, but then like people in masks come into the room with shotguns and shoot and then run out of the frame. Is he on like painkillers or something? <laughs> Oh, yeah. The slider is fine now. Yeah. Where are the guys who are shooting people? And why were they shooting? Where do they go? And then we cut, and that's the end of the scene. Every scene ends like that. <laughs> and then that happens multiple times. And we're like, who are these people in the masks? So, so in the Leo Falls... Jay, the drug business is very competitive. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's really hard to write a scene. <laughs> Take cover with women. Who's who is this? What's happening? What was that? What happened? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I don't know what happened. Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They got to film in a nightclub for five minutes. They're gonna make the best of it. That's the second time people in masks have run into the room and shot guns, and then the scene just ends. Leo Fong is just, he's just very bad at ending scenes. He doesn't know he doesn't know what else to do. The bad guys run uh, and shoot. Bad guys run and shoot people. Yeah. Well, that's I had said during the screening. It's like like I picture Leo Fong making this movie specifically so when there's like 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 Thanksgiving or Christmas when the whole family gets together, he can put his movie on and be like. Uh, maybe. The, the striking... Except for the creepy sex stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, at a minimum, though, because we compared uh, Leo Fong, this is a vanity project, but we compared him to, like, like Gedevin or, like, The Empire of the Dark Guy, Tommy Wiseau. There's, they all have a, a gratuitous sex scene. They all scene. have a no. creepy, gratuitous uh, black tank top sex scene. And uh, Leo Fong avoids that. See, uh, this is pointless. I just picture Leo Fong behind the camera, like masturbating. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> He's not having the sex scenes because his fetish is he'd rather be watching someone else. <laughs> oh, okay. That explains a lot of scenes in this movie, then. Do you remember the 15 minute interlude where we get uh, Low Blow's backstory where his daughter is murdered? Randomly. And it has absolutely no payoff, and it is never mentioned again. In the middle of the movie, we cut to four years earlier. <laughs> In Texas. In Texas. This we don't know why we're in Texas. Is it footage from like an other movie that Leo Fong made that never got oh, finished? Oh, that would make sense. Yes, yes. 
Yes, because it was pointless. Because yeah. it's was... like, it, like Dad, his daughter shows up. She's like, Dad, here's my new boyfriend. We're going to go out now. And then they go outside, and the guy immediately starts punching him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> and he punches the daughter so hard she dies. She's yeah. just lying there. <laughs> there's a comically, like, fl- arms out evenly, and there's no blood. What was that called? That was like a, like a thing, like, six, seven years ago. Planking? When you would just lay on the ground? <laughs> his daughter is planking. Yeah. And then, um, and then he goes to a bar and punches the people who punched his daughter, and then leaves. Well, he yeah, like an assembly line. <laughs> and he's just like punch, <laughs> punch, <laughs> punch. And then he gets to the bad one and punches him. And then, and then uh, we just cut back to modern day, and it's never mentioned again. No, no, near the end of the movie, you have Nighthawk say, "That was my son you murdered, who killed your daughter." Oh, the, you know, but he you has, do that. He has two sons. Sure. Because Eddie Murphy was also. You a can son. Have, you can, man can have two sons. <laughs> That's the thing. His wife's exist. uterus wasn't ruined by Satan. <laughs> <laughs> The woman's uterus was ruined by her father. Okay. Not Satan. Satan was unable to use her uterus as a vessel. For, for Get your uterus destruction facts straight, Rich. Oh, God. Get it together. Okay, okay, okay. Just calm down. You want your stuff? Okay. Doesn't affect low blow. Oh, my God! All right, all right, asshole. We've been getting out here for five minutes. Hadn't seen. He's just so bad. <laughs> but the amazing, the, the, the interesting thing about this movie yeah. is just how lazy it is compared to his other movies. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah. I was like, whenever it would cut to a new scene, before anything would even happen, I would just start chuckling. And I wasn't even laughing at like like the movie's so bad it's funny. I was just chuckling at how lazy and terrible everything was. Not specific things, just like the overall like effect. Lo- low blow, like the original low blow. That's got a scene where he takes his foot and he crushes a man's skull. Yeah. His head turns into birthday cake. <laughs> of low blows of turning a man's head to a birthday cake. <laughs> I remember that. The, the climax, I remember that. The climax of this movie is he, he shoots Rob Stewart through an elevator door. Did you say yeah. Rob Stewart? Uh, Rod. I said Rob. <laughs> Oh, he's just dead. That was the yep, that was the final confrontation. This is the laziest thing Leo <laughs> Fong has ever done. Not That's sure. the climax of your gets, fucking film. He gets to the elevator. He's hit the button, and we're just waiting. <laughs> <laughs> and five, mm. I don't. I think he thought Leo Fong was delusional. Yeah. He's he's insane. <laughs> he, he thought that would be like, oh. I mean, he's still alive. He's still making movies. I know. It's what he weird. could he could theoretically come here and kick us in the face for making fun of him. If he's making another low blow, like I think all four of us, <laughs> we just need to be those guys that just come up to him and he. Oh, just, oh, oh I want to get a dart in the forehead. Yes, the Leo, let us be in your movie and kill just, us. Please, Leo, come on, contact us. We'll pay just, for our own travel. We'll pay for everything. Yeah. We'll pay for the production budget of your film. <laughs> I just. I just want to get killed by by low blows. Yes, yes. And I, I think that, that would be a dream come true. I agree. That would be great. I want to get hit by his car. <laughs> you get run over by his car. You get a dart in the head. Okay. Uh, Jack bottle, broken bottle to the throat. Like, what do you want? Oh, sure. Maybe maybe he can bust out that single barreled shotgun. Oh, there you go. You just know, a nice like, squib. <laughs> yeah. I I, I want to get punched in the face. Sure. And thrown off a building. Okay, gentlemen, we have, we have had our discussion. Now is the time to pick the best of the worst. Jay, 
It's Faust. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, 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 it's, I'm leaning towards saying Faust is almost too good to even be on Best of the Worst. Really? Like, it's weird and it's goofy and there's parts of it that are bad, but it's pretty interesting and bizarre. Um, but I'm going to say Faust okay. out of these. Uh, Jack. I, I, I think there's a strong case to be made for Blood Street as it is a legitimately bad movie that is engaging and entertaining. Yeah, I was chuckling through most of it. Right, and so it's like in the spirit of the show, you want to say Blood Street, but I kind of loved Faust so much <laughs> that I want to own it and watch it again. Well, the official rules are most entertaining for any reason. Right, reason. exactly. Yeah. And so I have to choose Faust just for the visual flair and absolute absurdity. Yeah. Mike. Uh, uh, I, I have to go with Blood Street. And it's like a 51, 49% kind of thing because Blood Street, I laughed a lot. I had a, a blast watching Blood Street and it, it, was, it was really bad. <laughs> um, and and <laughs> in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a- In a fun B movie, in a fun bad B movie, movie night way. way. It, 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 Leo Fong maintained the expectations that I, I expect from a Leo Fong film. And By was, failing to match the expectations <laughs> of his previous <laughs> movies. By failing worse. Yeah. But that's my opinion. Yeah. I'm, I'm, now I'm really distressed. Yeah. Because now the, now the pressure is on me because- No pressure, no pressure. I am, I'm, I'm, I'm borderline. I don't know that this is entertaining as much as it is horrifying. <laughs> yeah. I was watching this movie you were more like- You horrified than the rest of us, yeah. <laughs> you were, you were it's so horrible, I feel bad voting for it. And <laughs> this is Leo Fong and it's funny because it's so lazy. I'd but say Blood, Bloodstream is more pure bad movie. It's pure bad movie. Yeah. I'm going Blood Street. Uh, I'm going split. Blood Street. No split. You that's know what all that means is we got two winners. Yeah. That's that's a, that's a real good positive spin on it, Jack. We got two winners, <laughs> and that's really good for a best of the worst panel. I mean, sometimes it's really fucking hard picking a best of the sometimes worst. Sometimes it's yeah, you want all of them to die. Winners, yeah. And hologram, man, you know. <laughs> I, it, I don't hate it, it so eats, much. I want to destroy it. Yeah. I, I'm, uh, I hate it for it's just wasting potential. It's a lot of wasted potential. That's a good point. But there's some I'm watching boredom. it, thinking here are obvious ways you could do this better. Yeah, but it's not necessarily insulting. Yeah. No, I, I wasn't like miserable watching no. it. Well, then how the fuck did we end this episode? Um, 